So hello, everybody. Um, my name is Christine Dawn. I also go by Christine Hartman. And I have been a solstice technical director, costumer, workshop assistant, and have had my own float in Solstice Parade many, many years. So in 1993 was my first parade, and uh, I have been a participant almost every year since. Only in the year 2000, I was at Stonehenge and touring Ireland and England. I thought that was appropriate that I was there. Since summer solstice is uh, one of the th things that is a celestial event. It's the longest day of the year. It's the first day of summer. And at Stonehenge, the sun directly comes through a crack in two of the stones and uh, marks the actual beginning of summer. So uh, that's just a little bit of history of the actual solstice meaning. And for us, Michael Gonzalez started a parade and we celebrate every year. It was a birthday celebration and a bunch of his friends got together and went up the street and pretty soon, uh, several years subsequent, uh, people were thinking, wow, I think you need to uh, make this bigger. I think you might need to get a permit. You might need to do a number of things. And it's grown into an event where 100,000 people might show up on that day to watch uh, the parade. And it went from a festival in the park at Alameda Park afterwards where everyone just sort of relaxes and enjoys some food. And now it's a three day full music event, etc. So for this year's solstice, it's virtual. And we're going to be uh, rolling through a virtual street. People are going to be in their costumes, but you're going to be watching a video from, from your homes. And even though that doesn't sound that exciting, it really is because people are spending a lot of time and energy and having a lot of fun creating their own costumes. And we'd like you to join. Uh, and your pets are welcome to, and we're making everything from mini floats, which are uh, basically rolling craft that are decorated, uh, something not like a cart, but similar. And Ricardo Morrison is leading that class. Uh, two uh, individual ensembles where groups t get together, like dance ensembles, uh, where everyone learns a routine and they share that and their music with us to a Polly's float, which is now celebrating the beautiful earth. And we're gonna be visiting some of his costume ideas, which are not involved in any sewing. So we're here in our homes and we don't necessarily have access to all the equipment and things we need. So I thought, well, why don't we do the no sewing costume? So that makes it a lot easier. And Polly is one of the masters of that. And I've worked with Polly for many years. I've helped him sew inflatables and I have helped him make his ensemble costumes, which are very simple. Uh, Polly is a master. Uh, and if you've ever seen the sewing that goes into one of those giant inflatable floats at the end of the parade, I think you could realize that it's not just something um, you throw together the last minute. So uh, we're going to go visit that as well. And uh, I think we should just get started. So uh, we're gonna talk about different types of headdresses, which are very simple. And the headdress is something that really caps off your costume. So this is gonna be the main focal point for your costume. When you're doing a no-sew costume, you're really trying to just get some bright colors uh, and drapery. And uh, we do that easy, uh, just cut a hole in the sheet and maybe wear a sarong in a special way around it or just go with the sarong. So uh, we're gonna share with you, there's 50 different ways to tie a sarong, I'm pretty sure. And um, I'm gonna show you some of those ways. Uh, and so it's this color blocking, and then we're gonna have the mask or headdress, which is going to be, and sometimes you could have some props. So I thought I'd share you some, with you some props uh, that I have made in the past. I'm gonna start right now. And so one year as Princess Leia, and I made these special buns, which, you know, they symbolize her hairstyle. 
in the uh, movie, which is very famous, and she complained about Carrie Fisher before, when she wrote one of her books, she complained about this horrible hairstyle that stuck with her the rest of her life. And so what I did with this is I just took a piece of rope and I took some silver fab fabric and I hot glued it all around the rope. And then I got a pair of headphones for like 99 cents at the 99 cent store, which you can still see because I didn't paint them. Painting something like this is a little tricky because it could actually start peeling and then it gets on your ears and stuff. So I didn't ever peel, uh, do it for that reason. Uh, in the parade, you sweat, it's hot. Um, there's experienced people know a little trick. So just try not to get too fancy. And then I, had some little sequining I put. So this is a very disco version of Princess Leia. I love to dance. My friends dance at the park and that's part of my disco Leia costume. Another year I made a very special tribute to one of my favorite uh, bands. And uh, if you know Daft Punk and groups like that, uh, it's more electronic music. Uh, this was my costume pretty much. Okay, so I did have another type of cost. Uh, obviously, it was wearing something. So I had a blue uh, bodysuit and I glued on some silver fabric in a chevron design. So sort of like a half of a top part of a triangle. And People loved this costume in the park. They wanted to see their reflections and uh, would dance with me and interact with me. And I did some robot type dancing. And uh, some of the elements of this costume are the cone, which is just a piece of plastic, which I glued on. Uh, I covered up something here. This was a bowl, like a salad bowl, the actual top is a sellable, but if spray painted silver. And then I got a ski mask that I had bought for low price somewhere. Got the ski mask. I found a way to glue it in here. So hot glue gun is probably, it's sort of like your uh, needle and thread. If you don't want to sew, you need the glue gun. There's hot glue and uh, it's pretty cheap. You can buy a, a glue gun for about three bucks and a pack of the glue sticks for maybe four or five bucks and you can do a whole costume. So what is underneath here is actually a helmet. So it's a bicycle helmet and I have wrapped fabric around the back of it to cover up its real identity. And Sometimes I even add padding if it's too big or whatever. We custom fit these so they fit really, really well and they're not a problem during the parade. So this is number two that I wanted to share. Now, number three is this year I'm getting into EVA foam and it is a special kind of foam which they usually use for garage mats or children's playground mats. So you've seen them before. This is exactly, you know, this was, I'll show you the mat. <laughs> this was a garage mat. So, you know, these interlock with each other and with some cutting, just using a, a knife, you know, basically a craft knife. Uh, and then I use a dowel to provide structure underneath. I cut out the pieces, glued them together with a special, uh, it's, it's a special glue, contact cement, that is specifically for EVA. Not all contact cements will work, so you need to look into that. And I have uh, YouTube videos and things that I can share with you so you can go ahead and, you know, review or look up things that I'm talking about here during this meeting. 
So glue the two pieces together and then take a Dremel tool, just a high speed sander, it goes about mine goes about 30,000 RPMs a minute. <laughs> And I go ahead and make these bevels. And so it's a really nice um, sword at the end. Uh, so anyway, this is another type of prop that you can do. So uh, that being said, uh, we're gonna get into very quickly masks. And then after that, we're going to get into the headdresses. So with masks, I do have a couple uh, patterns for you if you want to make a mask. This is one of the kind. You just would use your craft foam or uh, that's pretty much what I would do, craft foam for this. Cut out the pattern and then glue the pieces together and make it fit onto your head. It was very easy. So I did a couple different versions of masks. I have this mask. Now you might be familiar with mineral spirit uh, and other type of adhesive products that are used for professional makeup and sometimes you find them in Halloween makeup. So this is what you might use to adhere this to your face without having strings or anything like that. So uh, I would attach it to my face and I haven't gone ahead and uh, finished decorating this mask, but with just a Sharpie and uh, a colored pen, I sort of, you know, started something which I think is pretty cool. So with mineral spirits, you would just attach it to your face and then with your um, colorful uh, fabric costume, which I'll show in a minute, uh, you're ready for the parade almost. Maybe do it up your hair, get some food coloring, put it in your hair, or, you know, do something really fun with your hair. Uh, so another type of mask is here. So this is a little bit scary if you ask me, but I was experimenting with EVA foam and uh, you could glue bigger things up on here uh, you could paint it, decorate it, carve into it with um, your Dremel tool or a, even a soldering gun. Does very nice intricate designs in with this. Um, and what you do is uh, make a mold uh, using your own head. You can actually wrap some plastic around your head and use uh, masking tape to make a perfect mold of your head. And uh, after that, uh, you can draw on the pattern of your mask. And I'm gonna post the YouTube link about that too. And it fits absolutely perfectly. This molds to your face using a heat gun. And then you can cut uh, the pieces so you can make a flat pattern and keep that pattern forever of your own head and face. And uh, this is sandable, paintable, and uh, I could tell you more about EVA foam. I have a lot of tutorials on my page. Uh, it's a tarot, it's T-A-R-O for the cards, the deck of cards, the sort of fortune telling cards, or oracle, oracle cards. Um, I have a group for that. We're having an ensemble. We have seven participants and we will be submitting our video on the 10th. Um, Vlad, thank you, Robin, and uh, those who are in charge of things like that, letting us have a few more days before we submit our videos and photos. So moving on quickly, I'm gonna show you a headdress design. I have a couple different headdress designs, and I'm gonna show you my little head here, which is a way of, mounting a whole bunch of decorations onto your head. So we could take a lot of flowers and I haven't done it yet, but with the hot glue gun, it's very easy to go ahead and just glue tons of flowers on here. This is uh, the base and uh, I'm going to be doing a video tutorial where we actually show you exactly how to make this and I can even get you the materials. 
So also, it's this totally separate idea, but uh, I'm going to show you another idea. So uh, I'm going to do another video where we glue a headband onto one of these things so you don't have anything covering up your forehead area. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put this on here, and then you're going to have a headdress. Now, what one of my friends wants to do, she's going to do a crown, and you could put anything on this you want, but um, since the bamboo sticks are pointy and sharp, you can just poke right into this EVA foam. Just be careful. And then you can glue or attach by puncturing again into another piece of the EVA foam. You have to jam it up there pretty. You could put stars or any kind of materials at all, and you can put them all different lengths. So you cut the bamboo to a oh, shorter, higher, you know, mix it up and you can have anything you want actually on this headdress. So we're gonna show you a couple finished ideas of those uh, in the videos I'm posting in a couple of days. So quickly, I'm gonna show you how to use the sarong to create uh, a nice flowy costume with almost no expense. So, I have a sheet here, which is something I'm sure you have in your home. Uh, let me take this headband off. And as Polly was showing us, and I'm going to go ahead and roll the video in a second, but this is a nice light blue sheet. What I would do is just cut a semicircle here and make a perfect circle, perfect hole to go ahead and throw that over your head. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, even though he did it in the video, I'm going to do that myself with some nice scissors that are made to cut fabric. And cutting that there. So a little, it's almost a triangle, but it's a semicircle. I'm going to go ahead and put this on over my head. So you just fold the sheet into fours, put it over your head, if you can find a hole, which I can. So there. And the smaller the hole, probably the better, but I don't mind doing something big like this, a little slouchy, it's fine. You can uh, adorn this area with more fabric and jewels and everything. That's what I did last time I did a costume like this. And then what I like to do is I take the sarong actually under my arms. So this is a sort of a unique like invention I did. So I'm putting the sarong so it's wide and then, yeah, under the arms. Under the arms and behind, tie it right behind the back. Now, ideally, you would actually hot glue that fabric together or so. Uh, just small hand, a few stitches to keep it together rather than having a knot behind your neck, which is just for comfort, basically, is it the reason why you want to attach that. And then you have sort of, it's sort of like a robe, not a cape and not uh, anything else like that. Let me see if I can stand up and show you a little bit more. So, in any case, I'll have to post a video of this too, this idea. If you don't like um, this idea, let me untie it. You can also just go with the cape. So, over the shoulder. And tie 
and then you have a cape. Now, I would rather personally sew it or bring it together. So I would make it longer in this case. So instead of having the horizontal, I would do it longer and use the full length of the fabric. It also gives you less fabric that you have to manage at the front. And then you can put your headdress and hat on. And it's really perfect because you're not distracting from the headdress in your face, which is the main thing people want to see is your face and your headdress. So you have your flowy costume, you're able to move around freely, you have nice ventilation and flow, you can wear your shorts underneath it. When you're done, you can just take off uh, the costume at the park and uh, play with the sarong in a different way at the park or whatever. I like a lot of costume changes. Wear some good tennis shoes, usually if you're really be going to be in the parade. We can do a few different things uh, with just, you know, clothing that you have in the closet that you maybe aren't using and you think it's the right color. You could cut the arms off. You could you know, shorten it, you can do, use it as a base for a costume uh, and embellish and decorate. Uh, we can take foam pieces and make scales. We can uh, glue onto the fabric. There's a million things that you can do to be creative with that. So um, those are the ideas for no sew costumes. There's a million more, but before we end, I just want to share my screen with you. And uh, I think I have been, I'm just a little box at the top, that's fine. Uh, so I'm gonna show you this quick video that Polly posted. This is something that, that you know, we're really trying to reach out to people and see if they can't uh, engage with Solstice this year, even though it's virtual. Hello, hello, uh, Solstice Story lovers. Uh, my name is Pali Aksmano. Uh, I am a, a Hungarian artist who came uh, to the United States uh, to explore art. I do the Gun Finale since 1990 in the parade with my gigantic inflatable sculptures and uh, crazy costumes. And I would like to introduce my partner and right hand, Riemann Wide. Yeah. And uh, we will do together the demonstration. And right away, I began uh, with her costume, yeah? So this is the uh, middle cut from the, uh, uh, for the neck, right from the middle, this came, came out, yeah? And that's how uh, she will put over her head. In a second, she can wear this wonderful gold tunic. So I will show you how I feminize this a little bit. Yeah, so I cut in these triangles. This will be covered with uh, National Geography maps because uh, the theme of the solstice this year is beautiful Earth. This uh, surface of the map of more exciting as the other surface. Yeah, so I decided to use this, this side. And then uh, I will do the same cutting as I did on the tunic. Yeah. I cut it and fold it this way. This is the cutout shape. And then this goes the world map over. Yeah. And then we will hot glue this, uh, the map, uh, to the gold fabric. So uh, I use found heads. You know? I found this on uh, Victoria Street. So this is a found foam piece. I just uh, glue with a hot glue onto the uh, head right on the top. And I use a, a different kind of uh, gloves. Uh, to hold it from inside that uh, I didn't get burned on my 
fingers. Uh, also, I might uh, do a, a triangular uh, uh, string yeah, attachment to the head, just like uh, this head headdress. It's whole, it's much more secure, and I can dance in the parade. Yeah? I can uh, make it more uh, playful, whimsical, to, to do some maps around. Yeah, so this is Europe map. And just do it. So that's an example of what uh, Polly's got going on. I think you can see that um, right here in the background, he's got some of uh, the models he actually designs and builds a model before he makes the inflatable. So in the parade, this was more like, you know, a 50 foot wide, like inflatable ball with dancers dancing inside here. And he uses a model and then draws lines on it. And that's actually, he scales that up to huge and uh, we sew on it. And so that's one of uh, the things I wanted to share. Um, I'm going to go right now to my page in um, YouTube, and uh, there's amazing ideas uh, you can find on using feathers in a headdress. I'm just going to go right here just so you can see. Hey, Dylan, close. welcome back to my channels. We're going to scroll forward and see what this woman came up with. So. You could see uh, she used one of these headbands. So she's basic headband, and then she created the structure out of cardboard. She did her structure. So if you don't have EVA foam, which I can provide you, by the way, I will provide you this exact uh, setup here. I will make it for you. All you need to do is glue your headband on and uh, you're ready to start gluing flowers on. Okay, so she got some sort of daisy flowers. She took some rhinestones or sequins and put them in there as well. And she uh, actually spent some money on some feathers, which she uh, also added in. So she's done this masterful way. She tops it off. Okay, so she doesn't really need an amazing costume after doing that, okay? Her face and everything is commanding. So all she did was put on some makeup and she's ready to roll. So that's an easy costume. And uh, let's go to, quickly is to another one. Um, here is, let's see. There's one specifically that I'm looking for, and I think it's further up on my page. So and we're going to go back a little bit. And, uh, oh, to the Facebook. Yeah. So off my page. I'm going to look for my groups. Okay. Here's my groups. And so we are doing the tarot. So you might recognize the tarot deck. Uh, we are just having the basic right or weight, but I'm letting people, you know, I'm sort of the creative director of, with this. And I told them, it doesn't matter what uh, tarot deck you choose. We're going to go ahead and have just one of each of the major arcana. And if you want to do minor arcana, that's fine too. So uh, down here, we have... This is me in one of the no so costumes, so I wanted to show you that too. Uh, this is the flowy fabric underneath, and this is where I took the fabric under my arms and tied it behind my neck. So this is a beautiful flowing uh, look, and then one of the headdresses that Polly provides 
during the actual solstice parade when we have a workshop on the garden in Ortega Street, um, the, the arts work workshop um, that many of us are familiar with, we uh, basically, uh, Polly will have a section in the back and he will have artists just making. So he, this is like with the Chinese hat or lampshade. Uh, they just been painted and decorated with pool toys. Uh, so what I mean is those styrofoam type toys that are used to float in swimming pools. And so that's what these are. And he has a specific technique of making them look sort of like flames and use a very sharp knife to create this effect. Hot glue to glue it on. Uh, put it in a uh, strap system or a, a bicycle helmet many times. And then do some decorations, paint it however you want. And you're ready to go. And this is where it's talking about around the corners here of, or the edges of the actual costume. I glued in some beads and some decorations. So, I mean, I could walk up the parade and have an amazing parade in this costume without, I mean, that is like, if you want to just, you know, next year in Solstice, go to Polly and say, I want to be in your ensemble he usually has these ready to go. All you do is get some fabric, cut a hole in it, maybe tie this wrong by in your neck or however you want to decorate it. If you don't, I mean, you can literally walk into the workshop, you know, Friday night and have a beautiful costume that's perfect for the parade. So I feel like just taking this off quick. Um, so the next thing I want to show you Here's some supplies I have. I have the glue and bamboo sticks, knives, things for you. And this is another video I was uh, showing how to work with the EVA, creating my sword. This is me dremeling. Um, that's uh, working on a mask with the EVA foam and uh, where to get some of the foam if you want to work with it on your own. And this is one of our uh, participants and she's actually helping me uh, lead the tarot ensemble. So this is Mitra Klein, she's an artist. She usually works more in the digital media and she's very good at video editing, etc. And she's going to be the magician tarot card. So this is her, one of her handheld staff, her cup, and her costume has evolved quite a bit since then. She's complete, she's done, and she's ready to submit. So she's helping us with that. And just a quick uh, video, I hope she doesn't mind me doing this, but this is a quick idea of what it will be like to uh, submit your video. And here's another idea of a mask. Uh, so I think you get the idea that, uh, now this is gonna be my costume. So I'm going to be making a headdress with wings. I am doing not a corset style, but more like a bra style. I'm going to have this um, sort of loincloth type effect, some boots with decorations. I'm going to have a sword and a shield instead of this staff. And I'm very much looking forward to that. So, oh, here's the Stonehenge. Now Stonehenge, I just wanna share with you this because this is too cool. Stonehenge is gonna live stream the summer solstice celebration. They're calling it solstice celebration, which is interesting. But basically, you can see how the sun is actually shining between the rocks and um, they're gonna actually live stream the event. So you need to look up what time it is in England and things like that. But the, the link is on my page in the tarot group and anyone can join. So you don't need to make a tarot costume to be in that. But um, that is, this is another, we have one of our participants is doing the Queen of Pentacles. So. 
that's sort of a fun one. And uh, I just want to quick show you the demonstration of the Solstice Parade video so you can get an idea of what it's like to be in the vir virtual parade. We're going to go there quickly and show you that. <laughs> Summer Solstice Parade. This year, 2020, we're doing a virtual parade, which will mean something like creating these model floats or smaller floats and using a technique uh, of, uh, called assemblage, which is bringing together uh, different found objects. So first thing to do is to create something like a moving platform. This is a simple piece of plywood with four uh, desk chair wheels put on it. So it can roll in either direction. So you can make the float be imagining it's going this way or this way. This is a garden object, could be painted, could have flowers added to it. You place it on the platform. And then maybe there's something else that happened to be where we're... So Ricardo is doing, uh, basically he's demonstrating uh, that they are doing miniature floats for the parade. And um, this is a whole sort of promotion for that. He has his own group page off of the Summer Solstice page. So you can definitely find out more about how that is coming together. I think he has 66 people enrolled in his uh, tiny float project. So that's pretty darn cool. And I thought we'd just quick go over to Solstice and I'm seeing if I can't move this so I can see it better. Um, okay, so I'm just going to have to look for it in here. So summer solstice. This is easy. That's good. You like easy. So summer solstice celebration. Uh, just posted a video on how to submit your um submission for the thing. So this is sort of a combo uh, class. I did the no sew costumes and then the next uh, uh, thing I wanted to tackle was how to do a nice video. And since uh, Justin did it, so um, <laughs> a little video for that. I'm going to go and show his video and then I'm going to add in whatever my input is in uh, tips. So I did a internship for video editing and I've made two small films. Uh, one was actually the content was about summer solstice. So um, I could tell you about that later. But one was that and another one was with an artist named Ellen Hatch. And Ellen, he had a small dog and uh, named Gomez and Gomez actually had an art show at the Fielding Institute and we filmed that. For parade. And I made a couple other projects, um, you know, retirement uh, party type video or celebrating the family history or the person's history from their work, um, sort of on spec work. Uh, but anyway, I've been into photography. I managed a camera store for two years. I know a lot about photography, lighting, etc. And I thought I'd share what I know. So we're going to find Justin's video right now. And I just want to sort of highlight that, you know, there are some resources here. Uh, and I think we're just going to go to the actual website of Souls. This is what we're going to go to. So as soon as I find the link here, which 
I hope we can find easily. Oh, here's another miniature float. I love this one. So this is a mini float that's been completed and I think this is actually the one I'm gonna show. Oh, good, it is, yay. Okay, everybody, here's your quick tutorial on how to shoot your mini float for the virtual solstice parade 2020. First thing is you wanna make sure your phone or camera is in the horizontal orientation, not vertical video, horizontal. We're gonna start with the float out of the frame and we're gonna let the float come into the frame, which is the screen that you're looking at, kind of follow the action, and then let it go out of the frame on the left side. Okay, we've got our pusher ready and our float. Robin, you ready? Yes! Action! All right! There she comes. And we can kind of push in and see some of the details. Beautiful. And then just kind of pull back out and let her go ahead and leave the frame. And it's just that simple. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end that there. And I'm going to end the Zoom meeting and I'm going to come back at eight o'clock and do a separate one for the video um, on its own. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope uh, that has been exciting for you. And uh, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the virtual parade. <laughs>